Howdy folks, I'm Nathan Starfield, and I just felt like sharing my opinions on an obscure little cartoon from the distant and mysterious land of Quebec. You know, that funny little part of Canada that's full of French people. There's no Canada like French Canada, it's the best Canada in the land. Fred's head. Don't get too excited, it doesn't actually give any head. Well, that's the English title anyway. In its original French, it's Blaise Le Blase. I guess Blaise was too French a name for the non-French to accept as a leading man. I'd think maybe Blake the Blase would be a more obvious adaptation. Or maybe Blase is also too French, even though the word Blase is used several times throughout the show, even in English. You could be staring at a blank wall. You're Blase. But I guess Fred is appropriate enough name for a Quebec-based main character. Fred is also the name of the French-Canadian groundhog that predicts the weather on Groundhog Day instead of Punxsutawney Phil. Disclaimer, this tradition began in 2010 and could not possibly inspire this naming decision. The thing that gets me is that Blaze, or Fred, is allowed to keep his super French-sounding last name, Le Blanc, yet most of the characters keep their original French first names and instead have their last names changed. So there's characters running around named Annette and Fabian, but Blaze is still stuck being Fred. I don't need to nitpick about this all day. How's the show itself? Well, in general, I'd say I recommend it. It's a pretty funny show. It focuses on a jaded, cynical teen trying to stay sane in a world determined to drive him nuts and hopefully win the heart of the girl of his dreams. The show is sort of like a mix of Doug and Daria, especially the main character. He's got a Daria-like outlook on life, and similar annoyance with the overbearing authority figures and brainless peers that surround him. And Doug's overwhelming thirstiness and fantasy sequences. <laughs> I wish you a crushing success, George. It's a little more on the Daria side, writing-wise. It's a series caught in the middle of being a family show and an adult show. It's mostly written with humor that kids would enjoy, but there's occasional mild swearing. Also, sex is talked about a lot. The idea of being on TV fills me with the kind of joy a man feels but a token few times in his life. Ah, you're referring no doubt to the birth of your children? No, I'm talking about their conception. I have spoken with my dead husband. We have a date tonight to fool around in the bushes. <laughs> Also, our 15-year-old protagonist gets drunk in one episode, albeit not on purpose. It shows a big contrast between the broadcast standards of the U.S. versus Canada. The show was rated C8, their equivalent of RY7. If this was broadcast in the United States, it would have a TV PG. And even then it wouldn't be able to run on any of the big three cartoon channels without being cut down like Total Drama Island was. It's beef testicle, bourguignon. <laughs> Testicle? It's beef meatballs, bourguignon. <laughs> meatballs? To air uncut, it would probably end up on Adult Swim, where it would feel really out of place. I think it's high time I discuss the art style of the show. I think it's quite appealing. Fred's design is really easy on the eyes. His color scheme makes me think of Persona 5. As a matter of fact, his last name is LeBlanc. Ah, you're back. One sec. I'll be right back. I think not. I hope you all appreciate this, because this is one of, like, 20 pieces of fan art that exists for this show on the whole internet, as far as I'm aware. It's that obscure. Maybe. As I was saying, for a show animated with flash puppets, it makes the best of its limited resources. It's head and shoulders over some of the other Canadian tunes from around this time. But there's some design choices I don't really get. Most of the main teenage girl characters are drawn without noses, with Annette being the only one who has one. But almost all of the incidental or secondary teen girls we see do have them. And I don't remember seeing a single grown woman without a nose. Also, Penelope, Jody, and Tamara look exactly the same, excepting for their hair, eye color, and skin tones. So, yeah, I don't really understand a lot of the design choices for the show, but I do think it looks nice. Also, this bitch just has blue skin, but we don't need to talk about that. Now, something I really like about the series is the way character interactions are treated. 
Instead of just a circle of friends, Fred has circles within circles. Like so. Fred is never far away from his best friend, Gigi. That's John Gilbert in the original and Gregory Gilbert in English. He's a chubby little weirdo obsessed with strange foods and fanatically devoted to the idea of himself and the people around him getting married and having five or six kids like his parents did. Fred is also best friends with his extra middle school, Fabienne, or Fab for short, an alternative girl who's obsessed with both watching and directing gory horror movies. Fab and Gigi are also friends, but they aren't as close with each other as they both are with Fred. Fabienne is best friends with Annette, whom Fred is smitten with. Annette likes him back, but neither of them know it. They are friends, but they aren't very close because they're not sure where exactly they stand with each other. Fred is still pretty close to his childhood best friend, Benji, a jock who's not too bright, but a pretty good guy and overall fun to be around. 10 out of 10. Impressive. Benji seems to see Fred as his best friend, but Fred doesn't spend nearly as much time around Benji as he does Gigi and Fabienne, due mostly to the fact that Benji is in a sickeningly loving relationship with Penelope, a flighty, ditzy girl who is equal parts friendly and incapable of minding her own goddamn business. Penelope thinks herself to be good friends with Fred and is always trying to set him up with a girlfriend so they can go on double dates with her and Benji. Fred mostly just finds her annoying and wishes she'd leave him alone. Penelope has two best friends of her own. Tamara, a smart, shy, nice girl who shares a brief romance with Fred midway through the series. One last one? <laughs> Another last one? Mm. And Jody, the quintessential mean girl who, let's face it, hates everyone. Also, she can't find a boyfriend. I wonder why. As you can see, the lore is rich. This is where a commercial would go, but the only thing I have to advertise is myself. There's some buttons you should press below this video. I'll leave it up to you to guess which ones. While you're at it, leave a comment saying how you're enjoying the video so far, and how I can improve in the future. Lastly, what are some shows you think nobody talks about enough? I just might end up talking about them at some point, I guess. Now back to the show. I've gotten so used to seeing that familiar trio of a normal main character, wacky best friend, and female love interest, that I went into the show fully expecting Fred to give up on Annette and end up with Fabian. And I remember thinking that that was bullshit, because Fab is obviously a lesbian. But then I kept watching and what do you know? She really actually is a lesbian. I want to get out of this closet. This show for eight-year-olds had a queer character in the main cast in 2008, and yet nobody even acknowledges that it exists. I don't understand. Not to beat a dead horse, but you want to know just how obscure this show is? You really want to know? I tried looking for more information on this show on its fandom wiki, and it doesn't have one. There are wikis devoted to pilots. There are wikis devoted to shows that never even made it to pilot. But this 26 episode show that aired on the biggest cartoon channel in Canada doesn't have a wiki. If you try going to fredshead.com, you get some website advertising a six inch statue of some guy named Fred's Head with a bunch of joke descriptions saying that it pairs well with wines and cannot be used as a parachute. I'm guessing this is not a real product available for purchase, because clicking to buy it does nothing. I feel like I'm having a stroke. Somebody. Something I like about Fred is that even though getting together with Annette is his primary goal, he's not completely short-sighted in his love life. This is a pitfall a lot of these kinds of protagonists fall into that Fred avoids. He's open to the idea that just because there's a girl he likes doesn't mean he couldn't potentially be happier with someone else. As mentioned before, he dates Tamara for a few episodes, and there are a few other girls he's interested in for a bit as well. Even if they weren't meant to work out, I'm glad Fred isn't closed-minded in his romantic endeavors. <laughs> there are a lot of reoccurring themes and plot points in this series. Some of them are a bit odd, but after a while you start to accept it. Like I mentioned before, GG is way too obsessed with both himself and Fred getting married and having large families. Like in high school. He talks about this in nearly every episode. Also, his parents run a store called a clown shop, which you would assume at first is like a clown supply store or a store that sells clown-based merchandise, which it does, but it also sells everything else. Uh, sangria. 
For all intents and purposes, it's a general store that just has a clown theme for no reason. It's also a butcher shop, and I don't trust that shit one bit. One of the other most reoccurring things in this show is that usually more than once per episode, a character will look at someone who they're either infatuated with or otherwise admiring, and I'll do this sparkly background and play this song. <laughs> It gets to the point where it's actually fun to wait for it. You'll be watching an episode like, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. They're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. Yeah! When you look at her, there's like a pink aura around you with lots of little glittering stars that sparkle. And I hear this music. Another frequent occurrence is using misunderstandings to push the plot. Almost every episode involves Fred almost gaining some footing towards winning over a net, but then getting himself caught up in some misunderstanding that puts him back at square one. It's always something Fred could easily explain if he would take 30 seconds to say what was really going on. Like, I had to take care of my elderly neighbor, someone spiked my drink, or I'm not gay. But he doesn't even try. At least Annette doesn't hold any these misunderstandings against him. By the end of the series, she's still really into him, though unaware of his feelings for her until the very final moments of the show. Something that happens in every episode is at the end, Fred speaks directly to the camera and gives us a piece of advice that has to do with the episode. Sometimes it's nice little food for thought. Even when TV has nothing to say, it makes a point of telling us. Other times, it's just something dumb. In my experience, you can't always measure someone's courage by the size of the nuts they got. If I can speak on the writing of the show, I'll say that while it does have an overarching plot, there are episodes that don't always flow together in a way that makes sense. Like in the beginning, I didn't pay enough attention to the intro and I thought Fred was being raised by a single mom. His dad isn't mentioned until the third episode and doesn't appear until the fourth. Once he does show up, he's mostly inconsequential anyway. Also, I guess not all the episodes take place in order. Like, the show covers roughly one full year of Fred's life, but the Christmas episode comes before the Halloween episode. This is excusable, since many shows have their holiday episodes produced outside of the regular production cycle, so they can be aired whenever the network needs episodes to play for that event. Except that the episodes aired in March and April, respectively. What. The. Fuck. Let's wrap this up. Overall, even though I had a few problems with it, Blaze the Blase slash Fred's Head? Pretty good show. Definitely underrated. I wish it lasted for more than one season. With the season-long journey of confessing to a net complete, there are so many new stories they could have told, unrestrained by the format of the first season. Maybe GG could have had a permanent crush instead of falling for a new girl regularly. Maybe Fab could have come out of the closet. There was potential. But the 26 episodes there are are still worth a watch. If you want to support the official release, you can forget about it. There's a DVD that's not too expensive, but it's Region 2 and only in French, and I don't think it's actually being distributed by Teletoon anymore. If you want to watch it in English, you can find it on YouTube easily. So check it out. Hopefully someday it'll end up on Netflix or Hulu or something, so we can watch it legally and in higher quality. I've been Nathan Starfield, and I'm going to stop talking now. Wait, I forgot to mention Panook. The show had a non-binary bisexual character. Outward appearances aren't important. It's the inner beauty that I find attractive. I stan.